Good evening, everybody. My name's Graham Webb. I'm the co-founder of ProFit Personal Training. We've been helping people just like you for the last 10 years now, and tonight we're going to talk to one of those people, Kelly Savage. Question to Kelly straight away. How did you feel before you started the Total Loser Contest? Okay, so this time last year, I was feeling really tired and fed up. Um, my job is I work in a school, so I really do need a lot of energy to be in work. I was feeling really fat and overweight, and all this in turn was making me feel really quite unhappy. I was struggling to get up for work in the morning. I was struggling to sleep at night times. So, yeah, all in all, I was feeling quite fed up and unhappy with myself this time last year. Okay, and what made you... Sorry, what had you tried in the past? Um, I tried lots of different quick-fix diets. Um, like many of you girls know, um, if a special occasion's coming up or a birthday weekend, there's lots of crash diets out there that you can do for two weeks, which basically you don't eat on. Um, and you do lose the weight, but then after the party and you start eating again, you put it all back on. So, yeah, lots of really quick-fix different diets, slim fats, different things. Okay, and what made you sign up for the Total Loser Contest? A friend of mine had been training with a ProFit trainer and it was him that told me about the competition um, and I'd been telling him how I was feeling and he just thought it'd be something that I'd be interested in. And did you have any concerns about actually signing up for the course? Yeah, I had lots of concerns about signing up. I just thought that it, I wouldn't be able to do it. I thought I was going to really struggle with the exercise. Like I say, working in a school, I had no extra time as it was, so I wondered when I was going to fit it in. Um, and looking at the food and the different food diaries, I thought this was something I'd really struggle with. Okay, and was there a point where there was something that finally made you decide to go for it and sign up? Yeah, I got married in... 2012 so I'd come to a point in my life when I was ready to start trying for children and I just thought before I started trying it was it was time to change and get a healthier body to feel better in myself and then perhaps to start trying. Okay and can you remember back to the first time you came into the gym for your weighing at the start? Yeah, the, on the first session, um, I did feel really nervous. I didn't have much confidence in myself. Um, it was a nerve-wracking feeling looking through and seeing that there was 30 people in a room that I didn't know when I was about to go in and join them. And I wasn't sure why everybody else was there and what their reasons were. But after being in the room for about 10, 15 minutes, just talking to people and the trainers came round and introduced themselves, I started to feel a bit more confident. Okay, in, in your, your first session, the trainers did a presentation and we talked a lot about the nutrition program and then you set your, your goals. So what did you want to achieve and, and why? And why was it a real must for you to achieve it? Um, I decided that I'd set a weight goal and a clothes size goal. I remembered being back to when I was 18. I'm in my 30s now. And when I was 18, I used to wear size 10 clothes and I'd weigh around nine, nine and a half stone. So I set myself a measurable goal of nine and a half stone. And like I say, I really wanted to be wearing size 10 clothes so I could go out shopping and not be looking at sizes and thinking, would that suit my figure? Um, and also, like I said earlier, I wanted to have a healthy body to prepare myself for starting for children. Okay, and, and just for everybody else, that... The goal setting and the, and the why you want to achieve it is massively important. Obviously, there's, there's going to be some tough challenges. The nutrition's hard over the first two weeks. The exercise can be, can be tough at first. Um, and it's really important to, to do that goal setting session, which you'll all get a chance to do on Saturday, and to have a think about now why you really want to achieve this goal, how it will affect your body, your health, um, your relationships, your family, your career, all these things are really important and this is what you'll get a chance to do on Saturday. Once you've got a really strong, powerful goal, it makes 
the nutrition, the exercise, the turning up, getting over the cravings, it makes all this much, much easier. Um, just remember as well, write any questions down that you want answering. I've got questions from the Facebook page today and I'll ask Kelly everything, but at the end of this 25 minute interview, we're, we will answer any of your additional questions. So just type them in the box that you've got there. So, um, nutrition. This is what we're getting a lot of questions about on the Facebook page. So, which plan did you go for and, and why did you go for that plan? I looked over both of the plans and decided on the two-week detox. I was really determined this time and I knew it was going to be tough, but I thought if I could get through the two-week detox, it might make the rest of the time easier. Rather than trying to just cut individual things out, I decided to really try and focus on the two-week detox. Okay, and, and was it hard? Did you get, how was the first few days? Did you get cravings? Did you get headaches? Yeah, I remember the first couple of days really well. It, it was difficult, really difficult at the beginning. I think day one, you breeze through it and you think it's really easy. Day two and three and four, lots and lots of cravings, bad headaches. Um, yeah, really didn't feel great at the beginning. And um, did you did the trainer speak to you about why why you was getting the headaches? Yeah, definitely. I got in touch with one of the pro fit trainers because I actually thought at the beginning that I was becoming really poorly. I I, I didn't realise that these were the feelings I was going to get. Um, and like say the headaches, I was didn't have much concentration. Um, and the pro fit trainers advised me to up my intake of protein and also to drink a lot more water because my body was becoming dehydrated. Okay, and any other challenges with the nutrition during those first two weeks? Um, yeah, quite, quite snappy. I found myself quite snappy, which isn't generally me. Um, quite a snappy person, and I was quite tired. Um, they were the two main things with the headaches, but after the two weeks, this completely changed. And what were the, the questions? I know you had a lot of questions at the start, like everybody else has got at the moment, what type of foods I can eat, um, you know, when I should be eating, what I should be snacking on. Did you have these type of questions and what helped, what helped you with the answers to these? Yeah, I had lots of questions. Um, the Facebook page is brilliant. Um, I felt like we all supported each other, so people put different recipes on to help each <clears> other. But definitely the pro fit trainers at the beginning, I think I probably asked a minimum of five questions a day. Probably very similar to everyone else. You know, there's there's lots of things going on. I think you need the emails really helped, which we got from ProFit. And also there was a fat loss report on the email, which I didn't read at the beginning and went back to reading. And I wish I had read that at the beginning because that does answer a lot of questions and it makes you understand why you're eating and choosing the foods that you choose. And what about exercise? What exercise did you do during those first two weeks? During the first two weeks, I went on the Saturday mornings to the Total Loser competition. But ProFit had a really good offer on for the team training, which was two weeks training three times a week. So I decided I'd set these goals and this was something that would really <clears> help. So I went to the two weeks team training. Looking back now in hindsight, I really wish I'd carried this on, but I did stop after the two weeks. Um, I wasn't a member of the gym, but I joined Total Fitness Gym and went to some of the classes. Okay, and what was your weekly exercise regime like? So you went to the Total Fitness session every Saturday. You mentioned for the first two weeks um, you did um, ProFit's team training. What does that entail? Um, lots of cardio training, interval training. It was three times a week, twice in the evening and once at the weekend. Um, it was really good because that was meeting a new team. So rather than going to the gym on your own, you were turning up and meeting people who had set goals similar, similar to yourself. And like I say, I wasn't a member of a gym. So I also I joined up at Total Fitness Gym. I did some of the classes there. I did some sessions by myself. And if I couldn't get over to the gym, I was using Insanity DVD, which is interval cardio training. Okay, and did you find the exercise difficult at first? Yeah, I found it uh, really difficult at first. Um, but the good thing with both team training and 
on the competition, you could go at your own pace. You know, you was pushed by the trainers, but pushed for yourself. Each person had their own individual goals to do. I did ache a lot at the beginning, but over the weeks, my fitness and the aching both improved. Okay, so what were your results at the end of the first two weeks? At the end of the first two weeks, I was really amazed by my results. I lost 12 pounds. I couldn't believe it when I looked at the scales. I had to get back on. I was so impressed. It was like all the hard work that I'd done had paid off. You also get a measurement um, at the beginning around your belly button and I'd lost 10 centimetres from around my belly button. So yeah, after the first two weeks, I just felt like it had been really, really difficult and challenging two weeks. But to see them kinds of results after just 14 days was absolutely brilliant. Okay, um, and what was, the, what was the results like of the rest of the people on your group of them two weeks when you met up for your measures? Yeah, I think the majority of the group and everyone who'd been on the Facebook page and we discussed and been to both of the Saturdays, everybody came out of, you go in like a small room to be weighed and measured, everybody came out with a smile on the face and I think we all left on that second Saturday really confident that we could carry on and we could really achieve our goals. And how did you find the rest of the group at your gym? Was it Wilmslow you was at? Yeah, it was Wilmslow, yeah. Brilliant. I've kept in touch with three or four of them. I've kept in touch with since. But I did meet a lot of people there. Um, I've met people in the gym since. Yeah, really friendly. Nice to be part of a, a, a good team of like-minded people. And was it a mix of fitness levels and ages? I think you can see in the picture here. Yeah, definitely. It was a definite mixture of ages um, and fitness levels. But like I said earlier, it was brilliant because you could go at your own pace. It wasn't do 50 press-ups and you were waiting or you was trying to push yourself to catch everybody up. It was how much you could achieve. So it was very much focusing on yourself. And, you know, if you were struggling with an exercise, was the trainer able to change that and make it easier for you? Yeah, definitely. They had different exercises, um, so they'd show you an exercise that you could do and then they'd show you an alternative one if you were halfway through and you were struggling or they were brilliant. They were constantly walking around making sure everybody was okay. Uh, so we got to the end of the first two weeks. Everything's going really well. You've achieved amazing results. What, what changes did you make to your nutrition over them, after them first couple of weeks? What kind of things did you start to add in? Um, how did your exercise carry on from those first two weeks? Okay, so after the first two weeks, I thought, brilliant, the results are going to carry on. I'm going to, you know, keep dropping the weight as quickly. I carried on, like I said, I didn't do the team training anymore, so that was for the first two weeks. Sorry, Graham, what was the other question? What what did, changes did you make to your nutrition after those first two weeks? What happened to your weight loss? Did it carry on? So I followed the nutrition plan um, that was, you get emailed from, so from Profit Trainers, you get the email each day, um, they send you stuff over so you know what you can introduce. What was the other thing then? All right. Um, how did your weight loss carry on over those first two weeks? Okay, sorry. that um, Yeah, after the two weeks, I thought, like I was saying, it was going to carry on like that. The trainers did advise me that it would start to slow down. You won't continue, you know, to lose seven pounds, which is half a stone in a week. You, you couldn't carry on like that. Um, and at the next weigh-in, um, it had, when I looked at the scales, I'd only lost a couple of pounds and I felt a little bit disappointed at first. But then the trainer spoke to me afterwards and all right, it had not changed very much on the scales but my centimetres around my waist had dropped again. And I think this was a point when I decided to stop focusing on scales. I'd done this all my life. Um, I used to weigh myself constantly every day just to see what the difference was, how much I'd gone up if I'd gone down. And I think sometimes, especially as women, we can definitely focus on what it says. So I decided then that that was it. I'd stop focusing on the scales and think more about 
the nutrition and how that was making me feel. My body was changing, but focus on the nutrition side because and the exercise because that's what was helping me change. So in the past, if you saw that the weight had gone up on the scales or you hadn't achieved the results that you wanted to achieve, how did that make you feel in the past? Yeah, I'd feel really fed up in the past and I think I'd just think, oh, what was the point? And then I'd just go back to eating how I was rather than now, if my weight has fluctuated by a couple of pounds, it's not something that bothers me anymore because I know that I'm sticking to the nutrition and how I'm feeling is more important. Like I say, I am continuously losing centimetres. My body shape is changing. So it doesn't really matter what it says on the scales. Okay. And during those first four to six weeks, did you did you stick to the eating plan perfectly? Yeah, the first four to six weeks, I was really, really determined. Um, I stuck to everything. I had my cheat meal when they said to have your cheat meal. I had carbs only after training. I stuck to everything. I followed the diet sheet, just the, the food plan, sorry, to the T. Everything it said to have, I tried to have. And your cheat meals, so you was allowed a cheat meal once a week. How did that help you to continue with the programme and to continue following the nutrition? I think the cheat meal is one of the reasons that's really helped me stick to it um, because you know once a week you can have whatever you want. So on a Thursday you might be thinking about your cheat meal and you know, you well I set my cheat meals for a Saturday because I just think it, it's nice to have it on a Saturday evening, I don't have to get up for school on a Sunday. So the cheat meal to me has been a massive part and I still have this now. I just need to point out that Kelly's not at school, she's actually a, a teacher, um, so that's what she means by being at school. Um, okay, and did you have any struggles along the way? So people have asked questions about Plateau, I think a few people have read your story today, so um, people are aware that there, there was struggles, but talk us through what happened and how that affected you and your journey through the programme. Yeah, I did have struggles. I mean, I think we all do um, daily struggles, weekly struggles. You know, we might have a bad day at work. We might have a falling out with our partner. We, You know, life does have struggles in it. I did have a really difficult time in, in, in May last year when I lost one of my close friends. Um, and it just made me completely lose focus in what I was doing. I stopped going to the gym. Um, I started drinking again, smoking. I just completely lost all the focus I had. There was a lot going on. Um, I received a lot of emails from Profit, which at that point I just completely ignored and deleted. I just wasn't in a good place at that time. Um, and then one Saturday morning, I got a phone call from one of the trainers um, to ask me how I was doing and see why I hadn't been. We had a really, really long discussion um, and it really, really helped me. It's what made me get back on track to where I was. He advised me to relook at my goals, think about why I'd initially set them goals, think about myself and where I'd gone, how I'd become unfocused. And yeah, it was definitely um, definitely the profit trainers after the discussion that helped me refocus. And once I read my goals, I remembered why I'd started and how me and my husband wanted to try for children. Um, and the feelings that I had at the beginning and how over the last six to eight weeks they changed. So that was me. I just decided I was going to refocus and this time I was really going to smash it. Nothing was going to take me off focus. You know, as humans, ev every day in our lives we're going to have struggles, but we've got to just get over them and, yeah, remain focused on what we want out of life. Okay, and a big thing that a lot of people talk about, we got feedback last year, and some of the, some of the things that people love were the Facebook page, the community, um, the things we did outside of the actual gym. So how did you find the Facebook group, the community of your team, and did you do any additional events um, outside of the gym? 
Yeah, the Facebook page definitely helped. Um, I was on there all the time. Not not always. Myself asking questions. A lot of the time, you could you'd read somebody else's question. It it was what you wanted to ask. Um, not only did people from Total Loser answer the questions, but team the trainers were on there as well. So that was really helpful. Community events. We did a lot of outdoor training, and um, which was brilliant. We went out doing runs and and hill training, which. It, it was just nice to train with everyone outside the gym and we had a really nice team at Wilmslow and we all support each other. So, yeah, that was really good, the team training outdoors. And in the last few weeks, I know you did some extra personal training with a, with a ProFit trainer. Why did you decide to do that? And tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, the last three to four weeks, I was really determined I was going to smash it. I really wanted to get to my goal. I'd hit my initial goal and I'd reset goals for myself. So I went to see Emily, the profit trainer, who put me together a, a specific food plan for myself, which initially I thought I was eating enough and I was having five meals a day. But the specific food plan she set for me upped my protein intake again. Um, yeah, I just wanted the, the last bit of determination for them three weeks. And I don't mean because that was the end, because for me it was it was quite the beginning. But I'd set a goal and I was like, I need to keep my determination going. And what was the difference between that extra, the one-on-one -on -one advice, as opposed to being part of the big group? And the one-on-one -on -one advice was it, it was personal and individual to yourself. I mean, on our first session, we just sat down and discussed the foods that I ate as an individual, the training that I did, which is going to differ between everybody. And then within 24 hours, Emily had emailed me a food plan for the whole of the next week, which was brilliant because it was different meals than I had been eating and it was set specifically for myself. Uh, one of the questions that people have asked today, and it'll be from your time with Emily, but also from your time through the journey, how do you make sure that you have variety in your food so you don't become bored? Is it easy to find different foods to eat? I know a lot of the time when people see the 14-day nutrition plan, the question is, well, what am I actually going to eat when we take away things like bread? Um, yeah, the, the recipe book, the Profit recipe book's absolutely brilliant. And I think, again, going back to it, the, the secret Facebook page, everybody puts different recipe ideas on there. We put pictures on there. Different ways of changing your meals by using different spices. Different ways of... Shepherd's pie was always my favourite meal, and this was one thing I thought I was going to miss out on. But there is a recipe for shepherd's pie in the Profit recipe book with cauliflower mash. So there is alternatives. You don't have to think you're just going to be eating meat and vegetables. There's different ways of changing the taste as well with using different spices. Okay, so we got to the end of the twelve week, uh, the end of the twelve weeks, and we do an awards day where all the teams from the different gyms come in together. And we did a huge outdoor session. Um, so before we get into that, what results did you actually achieve by the end? My, my weight results, I, when I got on the scales on the last day, I was 8 stone 10. I was absolutely over the moon. I'd lost 20 centimetres around my waist, which I know I was saying earlier, it's not all about the weight on the scales, which it's not. For me, it was then going out and being able to buy clothes that I wanted to buy, looking at clothes in shops and just trying them on knowing that I'd be able to wear the different styles that were out in the shops. And what dress size was you by the end? Um, size 8, 10. Okay, so you'd gone from a 14 to 16, 16. down to an 8 or a 10. Yeah. And then you came along to the awards day. Everybody came from all the different gyms and we did a big training session together before an awards presentation. How was that day? Yeah, that was brilliant. I think everybody there that day, um, I can definitely speak for everyone at Wilmslow and I think for everybody else, we'd all worked really hard. It was such an achievement to get to that final day and it was really, really nice to meet people from other gyms. We did a lot of um, paired work that day, 
but you had to choose someone from a different gym. So it was really nice sharing your story with somebody else, finding out how they'd got on. Yeah, it was brilliant. Everyone was really proud of themselves. Okay, so just to let everybody know, Kelly came second um, in the competition last year. She won an iPad, and we've already started to hear about Kelly's journey, the amazing results um, that she achieved. We'll go through how that made her feel and the changes to her life in a second. Um, there was also lots of other amazing results. So with the guys, Ian Price, Matt Bergen lost nearly fifty pounds, and the eventual winner of the whole event was Keith Jones. And you can see the huge changes that he made. Keith won the two thousand pound holiday for himself and his wife, and his wife actually lost twenty odd pounds as well. So they did it together, which is fantastic. From the women, um, here's some of the people who came in the top six last year. So we had Liz O'Brien, Andrea Roberts, top right, and Nicole Whiteleg, who actually did this in preparation for a wedding. She lost two and a half dress sizes, and you can see the difference there and the picture from the big day. So there was lots and lots of people, and not just these people. You know, everybody who entered the event last year did really well. There was huge changes in... Um, energy levels, how people were sleeping, the relationships that people built, as well as the re physical results that they actually achieved. So, back to Kelly. So tell me a little bit about how you felt after the event. So you'd lost, um, you'd gone from a 14 to 16 down to an 8 to 10. How did you feel? How was your sleep? How was your energy levels? How did you feel within yourself? Yeah, after this you know, after the competition was over, I felt amazing um, in lots of things like Graham was mentioning. Then my sleep was, you know, I'd go to bed at night and instead of laying there thinking about school and worrying, I'd go to bed and go to sleep. My confidence just completely changed. It was brilliant going shopping, being able to buy whatever I wanted. As you know, it ended in the summer. So it's a brilliant time to be going out, buying yourself new clothes, to be out in the sunshine my energy levels and my concentration at school was just, it completely changed. People commented on my energy as I went into school. Um, people in school started to focus on the food diary I'd been following because they wanted the same amount of energy. And at the end, I was really gutted that the competition was over, which at the beginning I didn't think I'd be saying, but yeah, I was really gutted that it was the competition had finished. And how have you got on since the end of the last competition? Has it been difficult to maintain the eating and the exercise? Tell us about what's happened since the end of the, the journey. Um, like I said before, to me, it wasn't the end. It was the start of something because one of my main goals was to continue with it. And for the first time ever, I can say I, I have continued. I've joined Total Fitness Gym where I go three times a week. Um, I go to team training three times a week, which is really nice. Three of the people I did Total Loser with have also carried this on. And we've got a team of about 12 of us, so it's absolutely brilliant. We've got two really nice trainers who keep us all going. I'm still not smoking. I don't think I don't know if I mentioned that earlier on today, but that was one of my other goals at the beginning was to stop smoking. I've carried on eating well. Um, I have carbs after my training. I've always stuck to my cheat meal on a Saturday. I enjoy my cheat meal on a Saturday. Um, but I just, I, I really enjoy carrying on with the team training. Just a bit on that, that cheat meal. So you have a cheat meal every Saturday night. You have the kind of traditional starchy carbohydrates after training. When you have your cheat meal now and you're eating the foods that many people would perceive as bad foods, how do you feel when you're having that cheat meal now compared to when you've eaten those types of foods in the past? Sorry, can you say, sorry Graham. So in the past, if you ate foods that would be, would be perceived as bad, yeah. how did you feel in the past when you ate them versus now when you, when you feel like you've earned them and you've deserved them? Okay, in the past, I think probably you'd eat something like that and then you would be craving more bad foods. My, my cravings now, I can say, are, are gone. I enjoy my cheat meal. I don't see it as I've got to have something bad on a Saturday. Um, I, 
yeah, th there's no there's no guilt of having it anymore. I feel like I come to a Saturday, like say I have it every week, but some weeks it might be just sweet potatoes. I'm not saying I go overboard every week, but I do enjoy it, and there's there's no guilt there anymore. I f when I do have, if I have a curry or a Chinese, it's guilt free. I, I deserve to have that. Okay, so you're going to do the event again this year. Why have you chosen to do it again this time? Um, I loved the event last year. It was great fun. I really enjoyed meeting people and, like I say, being part of a team. I know there's quite a few people that I, I trained with last year that I've not seen that are going to be doing it again this year. Um, also, my husband's decided he's going to do it this year, so I want to be there to support him. Um, and we've also bringing along three of our close friends that watched me through the journey last year that all want to be part of it this year. So I'm really looking forward to, to it starting this weekend. Brilliant. So we're going to go through um, some advice that Kelly's got for everybody else, for you guys in a second. But if you've, if you've got any questions, we'll answer those um, in a couple of minutes. So please write down any additional questions that you've got. Um, we've answered all the questions off the Facebook page from today. If you've got some additional questions, write them down and we'll answer them in a second. If not, no problem. Um, so what advice have you got to everybody that's either on board with Total Loser or thinking about signing up to the Total Loser um, so that they can get the most out of their journey? I think if it's something you're thinking about signing up to do, I'd definitely do it because you've got nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Um, my advice throughout the 16 weeks is definitely go on the, the secret Facebook group, even if it's just there to read how other people are doing. If you don't want to go and ask questions, you don't have to. Um, so go on there and just see how everybody else is doing. Definitely set yourself some good goals and put them up somewhere in your house where you can see them. I put mine on the outside of my wardrobe so each morning when I was getting ready for work I would see them and each night I would see them and keep refocusing back to them goals. Remember why you're doing it. Preparation is absolutely massive. It's You really do need to prepare your meals so that when you are out you're not finding yourself hungry and having nothing prepared. So I'd definitely say buy lots of Tupperware dishes. Um, read the emails from Profit. They're absolutely brilliant. They're all, especially like I said earlier, the, the fat loss report from the beginning because you know why you're doing it. And it's, it's easier to do something if you understand why you're doing it instead of someone just telling you that's right. Um, turn up every Saturday because you're going to end up with a really great bunch of new friends. It's brilliant. And if you can, come and join us at team training. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We've got lots of comments. Wow, Kelly's amazing. £12 in two weeks. That's fantastic. And these are all, you know, I think the average weight loss during the first two weeks um, was about six or seven pounds from people who... You know, I either chose a few of the, the really good habits or they did the 14-day nutrition plan. Um, the average centimetre loss from around the stomach was five centimetres. So people did achieve amazing results. It really is worth going through the challenge of those two weeks and, and building some great habits. And as you can see from Kelly and Kelly's story, this isn't a quick fix solution. This is about learning long time habits and learning how to achieve optimal health where fat loss and weight loss is just a byproduct. You've heard from Kelly's story that sleep's better, confidence is better, energy levels are better, um, relationships, uh, ability to work, concentration, focus. You know, there's, there's huge, huge benefits to this type of stuff. So I would say the big thing from now is to to really focus on why you want to achieve the results, to go along on Saturday with with energy and enthusiasm, um, to, to really spend time setting great goals and thinking about why it's so important to you, and then just throwing yourself into everything that you do during these 12 weeks. Um, that's what Kelly did. That's why she achieved amazing results. And you know, we can see that that's what she's continued to do. 
and she deserves all the success she's got. Hopefully she's been an inspiration to all of you guys listening tonight. Um, I will share this recording on the Facebook page so you can listen to it again. So thanks very much for coming along this evening. Apologies for the technical issues earlier and um, we'll see you on Saturday. Thank you.